last time behind the controls of a seaplane for, apart from my revalidation last year, I think it must have been September 2019. So almost two years. Just started up and taxied and just getting ready to take off for our flight an hour into the mountains, staying up on a 3,000 foot lake. We're heavy. So it um, should be an interesting takeoff. There's been a huge explosion. That beeping was going for about a minute. And we were fast running out of lake. I couldn't see how far away the end of the lake was because the sun was right in my eyes. Hi, I'm Charlie Lambden. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Those of you who already follow know that this channel is about documenting my journey on the dream to take my family around the world in a seaplane. And this has been a dream I've been working on for a long time and this is a really important and special video because this is the first flight I ever did in my own seaplane uh, which took years to make happen and this is part two in a series of seven episodes of this trip to Norway when I was there for a week. The trip just got better and better as the week went on so this episode just shows you what happened on this day. It's a bit of a cliffhanger at the end uh, it was an immense day. So much happened from an aviation point of view. For those of you who are pilots and understand density altitude, there's a major density altitude lesson in this video and a situation that arose. And it's a tough enough lesson learning about density altitude the hard way on a land plane. But the thing about density altitude and seaplanes is that your takeoff distance required increases exponentially with altitude unlike wheel planes where your takeoff distance increases in a linear relationship to your altitude so remember that when you get to the end of this video uh, but without further ado let's get into it <laughs> So this first flight was from uh, Bergen in Norway, uh, a part of Bergen called Sandviken. And it was a 45 minute or so flight uh, to the east across the mountains. Uh, we had to climb, especially this clip here is, is where we had to be up at five and a half thousand feet. Um, this terrain is at about 5,000 feet uh, and it's stunning wild country. This is one of those places where it drops from 5,000 feet down to sea level for that fjord. Absolutely amazing. This is our approach for our first, for my first landing in the seaplane, okay? And this, sea, this uh, lake had an elevation of about 2,500 feet and me and the two guys on board decided we wanted to just stop off somewhere. We had some time uh, and we wanted to enjoy some barbecue sausages um, and they had a couple of beers because they weren't flying. The magical difference about seaplane flying compared to normal flying is that there's no runway. So I've never been to this place in my life before, let alone in a seaplane, and from the air we had to do an evaluation of where the wind was from, where we wanted to end up taxiing, are there any obstructions, are there any shallow rocks that might hit that we might hit on our landing run. Um, so we had just made a, a circuit of this lake 
at about 500 feet above uh, ground level. Um, and we were coming in now for our landing to the beach. Well done. Thank you. Uh, Airplane parking, seaplane style. It's the most amazing picture. My first flight in Nico, my seaplane. No one died. Beautiful flight. I was grinning from here to it the whole time. It's very surreal. Very surreal. In an amazing way. Just a quick message. That's the end of my first flight in the seaplane. And look where it's brought me. And the chap in the other plane has bought us some fuel because we were short. Because that's how it goes around here. We can help each other out. Uh, I need to point out here that I know a lot of pilots watching this are going to be thinking, don't stand by the propeller, don't hold on to the propeller, don't be in the propeller rock. But again, that's one of the things in seaplane flying where especially when you're docking uh, you've got to be very sure when you get out onto the float to dock the plane that you have magnetos mixture uh, cut off master off and keys out on top of the dash which you can see them up there because um, you're going to have to walk through the propeller arc whether you like it or not if you're if, if you're having to walk to the front of the plane so um don't think that I don't respect the propeller, but uh, on seaplanes, you just sometimes can't avoid it. Um, th I'm not saying this is a moment when I couldn't avoid it, but um, extra care is taken to make sure that uh, mixture mags and master are all cut off properly and the keys are out. But this is going to this is going to take some getting used to. It's like it still feels a bit like a dream. I need a pinch myself. And the reason that we're all in our pants is because we're wading in the water and fishing. <laughs> You'll notice here that I'm sitting up on top of the wing here, and that's a fuel can. So this plane came to meet us because, for weight and balance reasons, because there were three of us um, in the plane, and we weren't expecting to have three of us, we had to take off with less than full fuel. So we were a bit short on fuel, and uh, this guy came to meet us from a short 10 minute flight away from the base that we were later on going to try to get to, with a bit of extra fuel. He was supposed to, he's about to depart, and he was supposed to take one, my backseat passenger so that he would be leaving two on board and I'd only have two on board. And I still to this day don't know why that didn't happen, but it didn't happen. And uh, this is where things started to go wrong for us at this point, this beautiful day. Um, but uh, yeah, this plane is about to depart. It's supposed to take one of these two guys and it didn't. Meaning that we had um, a lot more weight on board than we had planned to for this departure. Taking off into the sunset, literally. 
This was also the first time I started to think to myself, hang on a second, that was an empty Cessna 206 with an IO550 engine there. And it should have, I, in my mind, I'm like, that should have just flown off the water much more easily than that. And I thought to myself, ah, it's struggling a bit. And I still at this point hadn't fully appreciated the effect of density altitude. here is almost unbelievable. Got one more flight today, just a 15 minute flight to a cabin where we're spending the night in the mountains. <sighs> this is what this place makes me feel like. Just a huge, deep breath. <sighs> Big sigh. And it's like a weight's lifted. And also being this far into the wilderness and nature, it's like having a mind massage. It just makes you go, ah, oh, I can get used to this. It's been a long time coming. It's been years to make this happen, but my God, worth it. They got the reindeer. There's been a huge explosion. That beeping was going for about a minute. I assume I've seen mining. Winds were coming from that direction, but now they're almost calm. And this was the first hint of the fact that we were actually going to be in trouble and we may end up being stuck on this lake. Um, so we were at, this is a, a very big lake. I mean, it was, I mean, at least 10 miles long, uh, east to west. And we were at the western end of it. And so we were going to taxi as far back to the western end and take off to the east as we could. And our attempt to take off to the east, um, well, just watch. This is still backtracking to the west towards the setting sun. So we're still backtracking, warming up the engine. One of the things that we did was we actually, because we were at a quite high altitude, uh, we didn't do mixture full rich. We, we leaned the mixture slightly to get more power for the altitude because we knew we were heavy and at altitude and there was no wind to help us get off. Um, so for anyone who knows about seaplanes, knows the first thing you've got to do is you've got to pull yourself out of the water so that the floats, the pontoons come up onto the water so that they're skiing on the top. So that's the first job. Right, so here we are, full power, stick full back, waiting for the prop to pull us out of the water and get the floats up on top of the water so that we can actually start to build up speed. But as you can see there, from the wake, uh, we're just not getting out of the water. We're moving incredibly slowly. And a new problem that arose is that the engine started to get very, very hot and our cylinder head temperatures were approaching 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Eventually we had to give up uh, as we realised that the plane just wasn't going to get out of the water onto the top. We weren't even, we had no chance of, of, of actually getting um, the plane up to take off speed. So we started doing things and what we're doing here is Daniel is pumping water out of the floats 
because we didn't pump them before we departed. Um, but actually, you'll see some water coming out there. Uh, and we've got to get all the weight out of the plane we can possibly manage. We also decided to water taxi up to the far end of the lake uh, to try and turn around and try the opposite direction because the wind had changed a bit. And here was our second attempt. Um, just before I show you this, so um, we had to, we actually spent about 15 minutes slowly idle taxiing all the way up to the eastern end of the lake. Uh, we had to let the engine cool down. The engine had got much too hot. The CHTs were way too high to try another takeoff attempt. There was virtually no wind. It was a very warm, relatively warm day. And we knew that if we didn't get off the lake on this attempt, we were stuck on the lake for the night. But apart from pumping a bit of water out of the floats, uh, we really had nothing else going for us. Um, uh, and we were just going to hope it was a bit better. We had managed finally to get the plane out of the water and onto the step, and it was very, very slowly building up speed. The density altitude was causing the propeller to not pull as fast as it, nor, as hard as it normally would at lower altitude, and we also weren't getting the lift from the wings that you'd normally expect either. And we were fast running out of lake. I couldn't see how far away the end of the lake was because the sun was right in my eyes. But Daniel, uh, the co-pilot, did know the area well and during the takeoff run I actually asked for him to help as to whether or not he thought we should reject the takeoff or continue going. The magical thing about flying seaplanes is that it is a whole new level of adventure compared to any other kind of aviation that you can imagine and I was really worried that I was about to get much more adventure than I had bargained for on my first day flying a seaplane because we did not have camping equipment with us and it was looking as though we were going to be spending the night on this lake. I really hope you enjoyed that episode. Please make sure that if you want to know what happens next, you subscribe. The next episode will be coming very soon if it's not already out. Thanks for watching. Fly safe. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.